Mike Anderson here with the Reno Fly Shop doing another tying demonstration. This fly right here is called the TJ Hooker. TJ Hooker is basically a jigged stonefly pattern with a nice variegated chenille and a marabou tail. This fly is perfect for imitating sculpins um, and also obviously stoneflies. Um, it's a really versatile fly too being that it's on a jigged hook and it has quite a bit of weight in it. You can treat this like a streamer as well. Jig it through the bottom of deeper runs or you can um, fish it nice and shallow with uh, a fly up above it um, using this as your point fly. So we are going to tie this. So first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna load up our hook and bead. The hook is a fire hole 523 in the size eight. And the bead is a 4.5 millimeter slotted tungsten bead. I'm also gonna add just a little bit of lead onto this. Um, you don't have to do this. I typically like, especially if I'm gonna be jigging that as a streamer fly, I want a pretty good amount of weight. So this is O2O lead. We're gonna go right around 15 wraps of that. One thing you notice too, I have my lead on a bobbin. It makes life a little bit easier to control it. And then it also allows me to easily wrap backwards. That way you can see when I'm undoing my little tags here and throwing away the waste. I got nice pretty lines there. That lead's gonna do a decent job of holding in that bead, but we're gonna give it a little glue just to make sure it holds. The thread we're using is Vivis 14 knot. You can go 12 or even 8 knot. I don't want a super thick thread just because the gap on this hook isn't gigantic. I don't want to jam it up in any way. So we're going to start our thread. First material we're going to throw on is just marabou. In this case, we're using brown, but you can do pretty much whatever you want. So we're going to pick off right around an inch of marabou and just separate it right off of the stem here. I personally too like the fluffier side of the marabou. Once you get towards the top of the marabou, those tips get pretty pointed. And uh, it's a little bit less action in my opinion. So I want to make sure that I have more of the action, which is the fluff. What I'm going to do when I tie that in is put it right on my tie-in point. It'd be right where the barb is if this hook had a barb. Some good downward pressure. We're gonna go one, two, three, just to kind of trap it all. And then I wanna make sure I cut my tips so they're kind of right in line with that lead. That way I don't get just some kind of weird bump. Those scissors are pretty dull. I've had them for a year or two. Let's switch over to the sharper ones. Perfect. So cut that off right at the lead. And if you didn't have lead, what you would do is just cut that marabou at an angle so that way as you lay it down, it tapers it. And that's gonna give us a nice, even body. So I'm just gonna kinda build up a little bit. Oops. Just to even out my fly here, okay. And then come all the way to the back. Now I don't want to tail that long. I want it to be right about the shank length. So I'm going to kind of grab it with my thumb here. And then using my thumbnail, give it a nice pull and a push. Separates it nice and flat. If you cut it, it's a little too square. By tearing it, it's going to give it a little more of a taper. It looks a little nicer that way. So next we're just using... Um, a coffee and black variegated chenille and I'm going to strip off that little end exposing the core and I'm going to tie that on top and then bring my thread all the way forward starting to cover some of those lead wraps I also too I don't want I don't need a ton of a taper on this fly, but especially if we're using this to imitate more of the sculpins or more of the crawdads, I do want a little bulkier up here. 
And I'll show you how to do that. It's just going to be a little bit of a tighter wrap as you're coming forward with this chenille. So the legs are just brown floss, okay? What I like to do though, and the way I'm going to show you how to tie it, is a little different than you've probably seen other people tie in legs. Usually when people tie in legs, they are going to get to a point without the chenille on there, do what's called a V-wrap, which is wrapping the legs around your tying thread and then bringing it around, placing the legs where you want them, and then you're good to go. Totally do that, not a problem. Um, to me, it's an extra step, and I wanna make sure I can pump out as many of these as I can. So what I do is I use my chenille for that step. So I'll show you that. So I'm gonna start wrapping that chenille forward, not really tight turns, just kind of bringing it up. And then once I get to roughly about that halfway point, I'm gonna grab my leg material, and then just like I did with my thread, we're gonna put it on the chenille like a V, kind of pull it tight, oops, I dropped it. So I have it on the chenille, pull it tight, kind of snug it up to the shank, and then wrap over, and you can see it does roughly the same idea, and it's a little bit adjustable too, so I didn't like that that front leg was a little low, gave it a little pull, we're good to go. Now what you want to do is maintain pressure as you do this next bit. If I lose that pressure, that leg will come unwrapped. So all I'm going to do is do the other side, so V-wrap my leg material. Just like that, snug it up down to the shank, and then wrap over. Okay, making sure all my legs are looking good, which they are. And like I said, to maintain a little bit of a taper as I come up, or build a little bit of a taper, excuse me, as I come up, I'm gonna kinda squeeze it up behind that bead a little bit. Maybe use my ring finger here to force a little pressure. And then I'm going to wrap over once, twice, three times, peel it back, go for twice. That gets a nice pinch to make sure that doesn't come out. And then we are going to snip it off close. So I want these flies to last a long time. Anytime I have a fly that I need to last a while, this is my technique. I'm going to do just a four turn whip, give it a little push. Whoops, thread broke. And I want to show you that, so I'm going to put my thread back on. So, let's just say I did that whip finish just like I did. I would then add just a little stripe of super glue. And then coat that. And then come in with my whip finish again. So that way I have almost two layers of protection. I have a whip finish and then I have some super glue and then I whip finish again. So the last thing to do here is to just grab my legs, point them up over the body. You kind of want them all roughly the same length. So I'm gonna lift them. And I'm gonna kind of guess, I want it unstretched roughly about the shank length. That's gonna be about right there, snip. And there we go. So with the technique that I showed you, if your legs are a little unruly, you can still play with them. But that is the TJ Hooker. Again, a great pattern to imitate. A Sculpin, a Crawdad, a Stonefly. It's also a heavy point fly. Um, right now we are experiencing kind of the tail end of runoff. We're at about a 900 CFS for the Truckee, which is pretty big. This will really help you get down and kind of anchor those flies. And it's a great imitation for those golden stones that should show up kind of mid-June um, through July. So um, the kit to tie this is available at renoflyshop.com. All the materials are too. Hope you enjoyed this. We should have more and more of these coming out. So stay tuned. Hope you like them. Go tie.